In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you six ways to make people like you based on the book How to Win Friends and Influence People. Let's get into it. The first principle is that be genuinely interested in people. Butter says that you can make more friends in two months by genuinely interested in other people than in two years by trying to make other people to be interested in you. He says that people are not interested in you, people are not interested in me, people are interested in themselves. Morning, afternoon, evening, at all times, people are usually interested in themselves. And so if you want to be able to make friends, be genuinely interested in people. You know, he gave an illustration that made me chuckle. If there's a photograph in which you are inside a group photograph, when you take that photograph, whose picture do you look at first? Mostly it's you, because that is how we have been wired. We are interested in ourselves, we are not interested in other people. And so he says, if you want to make genuine friends, you have to be interested in people. If you want to force people to be interested in you, then you would never be able to make real friends. And so he says that an individual who is not interested in other people will face difficulties in life. And that's where the failures of life come from. You have to be interested in people. You have to have people in your life. It's not everything you would be able to do as a person. There's a point in your life where you would need the help of people. So if you are genuinely interested in people, you make genuine friends who can always at a point help you. It's, friendship is a two-way street in which you can always also help other people. So the lesson here is to be genuinely interested in other people. The second point of discussion is a simple way to make a first good impression. You have heard the saying that action speaks louder than words. But when it comes to a smile, when you smile towards someone, you are trying to tell the person that I like you, you make me happy and I'm glad to see you. And so studies indicate that people who smile tend to be able to make more sales. They are able to raise happier children. I mean, people like to be around people who smile a lot. It expresses the fact that you like people and all sorts of that. So there's far more information in a smile than in a frown and as they are saying it's easier to teach somebody through smiling or encouragement than trying to forcefully punish them. The person wouldn't really learn a lot of things and so a smile is always important even when you don't see it. Sometimes when you're talking to someone on phone and they are smiling, though you don't see them smiling, you have a feeling that this person is smiling so always smile at all times. And so the very best way to leave a first good impression is to always smile you don't feel like smiling he says force yourself to smile sing just do something that will change your mood he says that action usually proceeds feeling and so yeah you don't feel like smiling if you decide to force yourself to smile then you would actually have a genuine smile afterwards you know everybody in the world seeks happiness everybody wants to be happy if you know most people whether rich or poor everybody wants to be happy in life and he says one of the surest way for you to be happy is by controlling your thoughts if you control what comes to your mind what you ponder on what you think on then you would be able to be happy this is because happiness doesn't depend on outward conditions but rather our inner conditions so if you are able to control your thoughts then you would be able to remain happy always you know, this is very true. Shakespeare says that there's nothing either good or bad. It's what you think about. And so it isn't what you have or what you don't have or where you are or who you are that makes you happy or, or unhappy. It's what you think about. You see, sometimes you are a person, you are there and you see other people and you think they have everything in life. That's why they are happy. And you try to achieve those things. For example, mostly it's usually money. You think that if I could have this amount of money in my account, I'll be happy. And you get that money and you find that there's no happiness that comes along with the money. It's how you think. It's contentment and so many other little things in life that actually makes you happy. So when you are able to control your thoughts, then you would be happy happy. Third principle I want us to talk about, the author says that if you don't do this then you are headed for trouble and that is trying to remember people's names. Studies indicate that the average person thinks or are more interested in their name than every other person's name put together. Author says that one way to make people warm up is to try to remember people's names. One way to make people feel important is that you actually remember their names. And this is very true. I remember one time I went to a bank to do something and then I left and I went back a month after. When I got there, 
I mean, the worker at the bank mentioned my name. I was so surprised. I was like, you remember my name? The person said, yes, of course. And I felt so happy. Like, I felt so important. And so when I was reading this, I actually agreed with the author that when you remember people's name, it makes them feel important. And it makes even those people to be interested in you and they like you as a person. The author indicates that most people don't remember people's names. People are usually like, I'm busy, I'm this. And so you start a conversation, you mention your name to them and they don't even remember within two minutes after you have mentioned but if you want to be genuinely interested in people if you want people to even like you then develop a skill of trying to remember people's names it makes them feel important it makes them feel seen you know just remembering someone's name so he says that when you meet somebody ask of their name repeat it in your head several times so that you don't forget it if it's an unusual name ask the person politely to spell it out to you and just keep it in your head the fourth point I want us to discuss is an easy way to become a good conversationalist. You know, exclusive attention to someone who is speaking to you is very important. There's nothing more flattery than that. You know, when you are speaking and the person stops everything they are doing and listens to you attentively, there's a sense of importance. and. The person will like you it means that you think they are saying something sensible you think whatever they are saying is worth stopping everything you you are doing or they are doing to listen to them it's such a good feeling and reading this book it always i always talk to just ponder on my life to see if i'm actually doing these things or not and i realize that i'm a terrible conversationalist most of the time somebody will speak in and i will just cut in and say something sometimes somebody will speak in and i will be focused on something maybe pressing my phone it's not a good thing and so I am really learning a lot from this book and I hope you are learning a lot from this book as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you are getting value from this video. Like this video as well. Let's get back to this point. You know, in the world there are so many good talkers. Most people are usually just want to talk and blab out the things that are in their heads but there are few good listeners and so if you want to be a good conversationalist you have to be an attentive listener you have to be interested to people you have to be interested in what people have to say and to become a good conversationalist you have to be able to ask people the questions they are willing to answer I mean, ask questions people are interested or will enjoy answering, encourage them to talk about the things they enjoy, encourage them to talk about themselves and their accomplishments, and you would become a very good conversationalist. And people always say things that you would actually learn that when you are always speaking. When you speak, you don't learn, but when you listen, you get to learn what other people are sharing with you. And so the next time you want to start a conversation, remember this and encourage people to talk about themselves, encourage people to tell you what they are thinking, they are accomplishments and you always get to learn be an attentive listener the fifth principle is how to interest people and that's i have been discussing all along the way to interest people is to talk in terms of the other person's interest and so let's say you meet somebody it's not all the time you always talk about yourself it's not all the time you share your experiences i've already Establish the fact that most of the time we are thinking about ourselves and so when we see people we want to talk about ourselves we want to just be doing the talking all the time but to be to make people be interested in you or how to interest people talk about their interests you have heard that the person traveled to this country so ask i mean what happened what were your experiences like would you like to go back there was it fun the person plays volleyball how is it like? What is it like winning? What is it like failing? And all those kind of things. When you are interested in the things that interest other people, then people would interest you. The last and final point is how to make people instantly like you. And the author says that the secret to this is to apply the golden rule, which is do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. If you want the approval of those you come in contact with, if you want people to recognize you, if you want people to appreciate you, the golden rule is what will get you for people to instantly like you do unto others as you would like them to do it's not at some times at all times i mean any time do unto others as you would like them to do unto you so you have to use little curtsies like i'm sorry to bother you would you be so kind to do this thank you would you please do this you know those kind of ways 
where you, it shows that you, I mean, you appreciate what the person is doing, you are interested in what the person, somebody has done something, you appreciate them. And so when you do that to people, then they would in turn also do the same back to you and you would instantly be liked by other people. This client is that make the other person feel important. I think I've been saying this throughout the whole series. Make somebody feel important and do it sincerely. It's not just a camouflage thing. Make the person feel important and the person will instantly like you. People like to feel important. People want to be appreciated. I hope you are enjoying this series so far from the book How to Win Friends and Influence People. Do catch up on part one here on the techniques in handling people. I'll be bringing you part three and part four later. Can you subscribe? the channel i mean like this video share with other people thank you very much stay safe and bye for now